on our link. Thank you. That's great. Oh, no. Okay. And then uh, alumni mentorship one on one form. There's a, this is also part of the pay member program. Um, so if you want to be part of this, um, please visit the links in our link tree. And uh, technically, we should be in the pen testing workshop. No, right? I forgot to update that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, the same thing. Okay. Yeah. So very. All right, I'm, I'm taking the mic again. So it's a very going to be a very short table of contents. And I'm going to just, as I said earlier, I'm going to bring up some tips and things I didn't really get to touch up on on Tuesday. Hopefully you still have access to those slides if you need a for, for reference for today's lab. And yeah, there's also going to be a lab today because it's workshop day and that's what happens on workshop day. So, okay. Uh, okay. Tip for recon. I have like a little Googling template because I noticed that this is something that some people just, uh, it's like a common mistake or just something that a lot of people don't really do too often. So when you're looking for, say, a public exploit, after you do your initial scans with Nmap and let's just say you find something's running, all you got to do is maybe search up the name of the service, its version. Why, why does it say version, version? Uh, <laughs> And then the word exploit, or you can also do service name and then exploit, and there will be a lot of. Well, if it's um, there's if there is a lot of exploits known for it, or if it's a well-known exploit, there should be results like on the first result from Google. A good website that may or may not show up oftentimes is something called Hacktricks. Hacktricks it has a lot of details and different ways that you can try to approach a service. So if you see that resource pop up from your Googling, you might want to give it a look. And from your scans, if you see that a box is running HTTP or HTTPS, but it's on a alternative port. So normally HTTP and HTTPS, they run on 80 and 443 uh, respectively. But let's just say you do your scan and you see port 3000 is running a web server for whatever reason. You can still access that in your URL. You just have to do HTTP, the IP address of the box, and then colon the port number. Usually HTTP it automatically tries to do port 80, but if it's not on port 80, then, you know, let's say it's on 3000, you'll just do HTTP, then the IP address, and then 3000. For reverse shell stuff, just a quick reminder that you can get them at HTTPS home slash slash pokey.covertops.xyz. Some nice ones that you have more, that seem to work more consistently are the NC Tech E bin bash reverse shell and the bash tech I reverse shell. All those templates are available on that website. When you get a reverse shell, though, it may look kind of ugly. Like on the right, it's just blank. You, you just type text in. If you want to make a reverse shell look a little prettier, then just run that command on the bottom, the Python 3, text C, import PTY, whatever. That's going to make your shell look a little nicer and be a bit more stable for the most part. And th th this only applies to uh, Linux. Today's going to be a Linux box. For persistence, the thing that I kind of screwed up on on Tuesday, there's a one-liner on top for you to, if you want to utilize, to establish persistence on a box. What this one-liner does is it's going to add an automated task that runs every minute that, rever that runs a reverse shell payload. Just replace the brackets uh, that I left there with the actual payload that you're going to be running for persistence. And it might return an error for some, for whatever reason, but you can actually check to see if your command was su successful by running the contab tech L command. And that's going to return to you a list of automated tasks that are running under your user. So if you see the entry that you wrote in the one liner show up there, then you know it works. And sometimes, running a single command may not work but some uh an alternative is you can get your reverse shell payload write it to a script make the script executable 
and then tell the tell the uh, automated task to run that script. I think I should actually add a little correction here. Rather than doing this, we just add bash right there. I don't know why I forgot that. But yeah, those three steps I was talking about, writing the reverse shell payload to a script, making it executable, and then essentially telling in the automated task to run that script. That's all detailed in those three lines on the bottom. Okay, yeah, it's the lab time now. If hope I'll leave these slides up and if you guys need them for reference, I can go back to them. I'm also gonna have them on the link tree like right now. So if you want to reference the slides. Can you, uh, yeah, can you put like both loops? Yeah, or, I mean I mean Tuesday. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> Bless. Okay. So the lab instructions connect to the VPN like you guys been doing for like the past some time now. I think like a few months, something like that. The credentials to the Kali box that you're going to have access to is going to be Kali colon Kali. And then Kali also has root access. So if you need to switch into root for whatever reason, you could just do sudo su. The target machine should be 192.168.1.3. If it isn't, let me know and I'll take a look. But from all my testing, it is that IP address. And the goal here is to see how many different ways you could try to get a foothold, so your initial shell, and how many different ways you could try to get root from that foothold. I think for each, I put like a total of three intended ways, but you no, know, it's up to you guys to figure out each of those ways. It is a Linux box and yeah. Good luck, I guess. Oh. Wait. I don't have credentials. Do you need these prick reds? You already gave them out, did you not, Brian? Yeah. Yeah, okay. But but do you need it? Or you, yeah. Oh, no, I, I have my creds. Okay. Yeah, if someone in person needs creds, just tell them to DM me on disk. Oh my God. Okay. Oh, yeah, feel free to work in groups or with other people. There's like no restrictions on how you approach this. You can do whatever you feel like. You can try to talk to other people. Feel free to use Google. No restrictions at all. Just find wh whatever you do, just try to find all the different ways to get a foothold on the box and try to get, try to root it. Oh yeah, and if you guys have any questions, feel free to ask me and or toss a question in chat and I can take a look into it.
If you're talking, you're muted, by the way. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, okay. I was going to say. All right, Brian. Yeah, so just uh, to reiterate, I just logged into vSphere, and my view is probably going to be different than all of yours, but under uh, this resource group called Swift Workshops, you should be able to browse, or not browse, but you should be able to see one pod over here. And if you like click on the drop down arrow, uh, what you want to access is your Cali machine. Um, this machine over here that's called uh, Hacktober, that is going to be the machine that you're going to um, perform your scans on and try to exploit vulnerabilities on. So what you want to do, and sorry if this is your machine, but I'm going to go on it. You're gonna click on launch web console or remote console. I'm just gonna do web console and you should be able to see your login page. Uh, mine's really scuffed right now. I think the password is- You gotta log in as Cali. Okay, you gotta log in as Cali with the password of Cali. And this is where you're going to um, see your Cali interface. So everyone is able to log into their Cali machines. Anyone need help with logging to the Cali machines? Everyone good? Okay. And then from there, um, I'm going to give you like a little bit of a quick tip. Um, anyone know like the first step on how to um, perform a pen test or like try to hack into a box? Good. Nmap. So Andrew said Nmap uh, would be a good way to start. And I agree. So the machine that we are attacking, I think it's 1.3, right? Yeah, 1.3. Yeah. So just for starters, and I'm gonna I'm not gonna go too in depth on this. Um, what you would want to do first, I can zoom in, is nmap type in the command nmap and then what you want to nmap so um i know someone's on this box so um <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> right so this would be your starter command there are like certain different flags or different settings you can uh, change with the nmap command but um you should look at the slides which are on the link tree if you want more information but this should do the job um the rest of the details uh, that's going to be up to you but feel free to do your scan and go ham with this box. Yeah, I think everything that I implemented here should be possible through the stuff that we displayed on the slides. So if you need some help, refer to Tuesdays and uh, the slides here. We should hopefully help you out. I'll come back.
versus Liquid Machine. All right. It's just, it's just a technical. I got an update. Apparently, for some people, the target machine has an IP address of dot two rather than dot three. So, so just scan both, and whichever one has port twenty one open is probably the one. I'm gonna update the slides real quick.
How are y'all doing, Zoom? Everyone okay with um, the lab environment? Yes. Thank you, Salvador. Yeah, well, if you need any help, just yell into the chat. We'll go back over there to help you. Uh, I will check up on Zoom here and there. But, um, Keep at it at the lab and just let us know if you need any help.
I'm going to kind of take silence as well here. Um, right, you have power to make breakout rooms, right? Yeah, I have power. If if they decide they want it, can you go ahead and do it first? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah.
Okay. Hope this works. All right. Hello. Hello, everybody. Can I get everyone's attention real quick, like for five or thirty minutes? Go ahead and grab your seats. Dylan's going to go ahead and go over yeah. some of what you laid out. We we have uh we have thirty minutes left, so I'm going to use this time to go over all the vulnerabilities that I try to implement within the environment. So I'm just going to get that set up. Uh, okay. Do I do this? So. I'm going to open up a random pod. Hopefully nobody used it. I'm going to go for 54. Okay. Uh, wait, I don't know where to get rid of this. Okay, whatever. Okay. Close this one. Uh, all right, I don't think anyone's used this pod yet. So I'm, I'm gonna go over the whole environment and how I would normally approach it from a completely blind perspective. Let's see, I like to do everything as root for no particular reason. So I'm just gonna do that. Oops. Anyways. So I'm going to start off with, well, first I need to know my IP address. Okay, so since I'm dot two, I think the box is going to be on dot three. So I'm, I'm going to test if I can hit the box first. Oops, that's 13. So I'm getting a response from a ping test. So I'm going to assume that one's the right box. I'm going to start off with a normal IMAP scan. Oh, wow, that was fast. So yeah, I think this is the box. I'm, I'm going to run a detailed scan on it now. Oops, that is not the right button. Here we go. So I'm gonna run the detailed scan on it now. I see that there's three ports, so hopefully I get some more details on the three ports. All right, uh, so after that detailed scan, I can see that there's three, well, I mean, there was three services running to begin with, but uh, at least I have more information to go off of right now. So I can see there's VSFTVD 2.3.4, WorkZug, uh, HUVD, so that's like an HTTP server running on 3000. And I see there's another HTTP service called Tomcat, and it's running some version, and it's running on port 8080. So I'm gonna start off with VSFTVD, or so just do a little search. Okay, first result comes up is some uh, backdoor command execution. Uh, wow, help, why is this here? Okay, whatever. And well, it seems there's a Metasploit module for it. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with that just to make my life easier. So, Oh, wait, I'm gonna need to keep my scan open actually. I'm gonna leave that here. And I'm gonna open up Metasploit now. While that opens up, I'm also gonna just gonna have some other stuff on my the side that might help me. So uh okay. So it seems there's um uh, Metasploit module from this version of VSFTB that was shown in the scan. So I'm going to take a look into that. I'm going to do, I'm going to run search in Metasploit to look for it, and it's exploit number zero from that search. So I'm going to do U zero, and then so now that I have the exploit selected, which I can see it's right here. It says exploit, and then the name of the module. So I'm gonna hit options now, and I'm gonna see that for the options, everything except the R host is configured, which is the target host. So the target machine is, 
uh, what is the target machine again? Uh, this, so I'm gonna copy that. And if I look at the options again, everything should be configured. So I'm gonna run it. And well, I mean, this output looks relatively promising. Okay, so to test if, uh, so if I run ID here or who am I and host name, I can see there's some numbers. I am root and the name of my host is Cali. If I run this over here, I can see that I'm on a machine called Hacktober1 and my name is user now, which means I'm on the, uh, I'm on the victim machine now. So that's cool. Now, I'm going to set up some persistence. So my persistence is in the form of automated reverse shells because that's just simple. So I'm going to run this command to set up a listener to catch the reverse shell. And now I'm going to uh, generate a reverse shell payload. Well, hopefully my shell doesn't die. I think I'm, am I dot three? Let me see. No, I'm dot two. I am going to be dot two. And just gonna go for a bash shell. Pretty sure that part's optional anyways. And I'm going to copy this. So I'm gonna make a script. So I'm gonna, this is my reverse shell command. And I'm going to write it to a script called script.sh. So if I read that script, there's the command that I wrote into there. And now I'm going to make that script executable through the chmod command. And now I'm going to need to do my whole one-liner one -liner thing. So I'm gonna copy this and this is just the way I like to do things. I'm gonna put in my URL bar so it's easier for me to type out. So I'm gonna do cron tab, tag L, echo, uh, two, three, four, five, hash, ten, script.sh. And it says something weird. Um, it looks like it aired out, but if I check my automated tasks through contact tag L, like I was showing in the slideshow, uh, I can see that my automated task is in there now. So theoretically, if this is all working great, every, once every minute, uh, I should get a callback over here that allows me to gain access to their system. I'm going to hope that works. Until then, I'm going to run linpeas, which I covered on Tuesday. I'm just gonna look for linpeas on GitHub. Because now that I have my foot in the door, I have access to their system, I want to look for information on there. Or at least I, I want to get an idea of ways I can escalate my privileges. So I'm going to go to linpeas on the GitHub, check the releases out. And I'm gonna go for the Linux one on AMD 64. Oh, hey, my shell came back. That's crazy. All right. So I'm gonna go to the temp directory. The reason why I like the temp directory and the reason why I wrote my script in the temp directory is this directory indicated by this from this output, it's anybody can write and execute it. So I know that no matter what user I am, high or low privilege, I can always just write my stuff in here. So that's why I choose this one. Anyways, I forgot what I was doing. Oh, linpeas, right. I'm gonna run the wget command on this URL so I could get the linpeas script. That was fast. And you see the script is named uh, this. So I'm gonna make it executable. Oops, press the button. And I'm gonna execute the script now. 
and it looks like it blew up. Wait, why am I doing AMD 64? I meant, I meant to get the shell script. I'm not thinking right now. My bad. Let's see, did my shell die? Okay, no. Let me, let me do, oh, there we go. Now it died. Thank God I have persistence because now I could just, I'm going to set up another listener to catch another connection just in case this one dies too. So I'm going to um, go back to temp from this, um, from my shell, or in this case, my reverse shell. And I'm going to wget the Linpy's shell script again. And I can see that's there. So now I'm going to make it executable and run it. This time it doesn't die. And I got another shell. Persistence is amazing. Okay. Yeah, this is going to take a while. While that runs, you could take the opportunity to look at the other ports. It looks like there is something called WorkZug and there's something called Tomcat. So I'm going to look for a WorkZug. WorkZug. I'm going to see if there's an exploit related to that. There's a hack tricks article, so I'm going to take a look at that. If debug is active, you can try to access console and game remote code execution. So I'm just going to go check that out. 921681333000. Apparently, it's on the console. And all I have to do is just try to run this command. So I'm going to run that. See if Linpiece is still running. Oh, Linpiece is finished. Okay, but before we read the Linpiece alpha, let's see if we can potentially get a way in through this way. So according to Hacktrix, all I have to do is go to this console and run that. So import OS. Okay, so it looks like this console is another way that you can execute commands. Okay, so we could also we could theoretically also use this endpoint to run a reverse shell to get our way back into the system. It looks like there's more than one way. So the first way was the VSFTPD exploit, and the second way was using could be using this WorkZug interactive console. Now, going back to the Linpy's output though, let's see, there's a lot of stuff. I wanna see if there's anything that's highlighted orange first, cause that's usually like a priority when it comes to Linpy's. The red stuff, it doesn't really mean all that much, but stuff that's highlighted orange, usually like this thing. These things usually stick out more because Linpy's just st makes it stick out more. Usually this means that they're, they're more likely to be a vulnerable configuration. So let's see. Linpy's is showing me the SUIDs and it seems that it's highlighting bash because it's an SUID. So I'm gonna to go to GTFO bins, which is the website that I mentioned on Tuesday. And I'm, the SUID in this case is called bash. So I'm gonna type in bash in here. And I wanna look for the entry that talks about an SUID, which is gonna be down here. And Based on this, it's just it just wants me to run the bash command with the tack p flag. I don't really know what this part is up here, but it looks like all you need to do is run bash tack p. So I'm gonna try that out. If I type in ID or if I type in who am I, I'm root now. So that's one way to get root because apparently the bash 
as a uh, binary was misconfigured and allowed users to get root by just running the bash attack key flag. Let's see if there's anything else in here though, aside from just that. I don't know why these are highlighting. I don't know. I, need, I don't even know what this means. Uh, it looks like the user user has pseudo privileges. So going back to GTFO bins, the pseudo privilege is on a binary called Vi. So I'm going to go to look for the entry on Vi. over here and if it ha if it has sudo it looks like i just run this command so i'm gonna go back to let's see let me just exit out of here so i'm back to being just a normal user oops i'm back to being just normal user so if i run the sudo vi can see or uh, wait let me, let me look at that again, just to make sure I'm getting the right command down. Uh, okay, it's user bin vi. Where do sudo user bin vi? Well, you go back. User bin vi, tech c, colon exclamation mark, bin sh, I think that's what this says. And then dev null. I don't even know what's going on anymore. Oh, okay. I guess it worked. I'm root now. So there was another way to get root, which was through that. Uh, Let's see if we could go back to the LinPs output for the third time. Okay, going back all the way down. See if there's anything else. So we were, where were we last time? Okay, so we were here, so going back up. There is a automated task that's running. Wait, no, never mind. This this is mine. I don't think that's anything particularly dangerous. But it looks like this machine is vulnerable to CVE 2021-4034. If I Google that, if I Google that one, 4034. It looks like people are calling this one Pwn Kit. Let's see if Metasploit has a module for this one. Search Pwn Kit. Looks like they do have it. If I look, if I try to use it though, uh, let's see. I need a session. But I don't have any sessions on me anymore because my session died. So. Let's try the VSF TBD thing again and see if it works. Okay. So looks like the exploit works again, even though it kicked me out earlier. So this way I can get another session and I can try to run that Pwnkit exploit again. Let me see. So I'm going to exit out of my session real quick. And I'm going to try to use this exploit. I'm gonna set the session to two, because that's what the session was called. And I'm gonna see if this works. Uh, 
don't know if I'm supposed to keep waiting or not. I don't like to use Metasploit all too often. Uh, I'm going to give it some time since it doesn't prompt me with anything yet. But... Is it alive? Uh, I think it's still taking its time. I'm gonna hope it didn't die. Yeah, it looks like my Metasploit is just going to hang. So I'm going to let that sit for a while and come back later to see if it uh, if it's still alive. Let's see. Going back to... Oops. Going back to this interactive console, though, let's see if we could try to get a reverse shell. So I'm going to copy this. I'm going to copy this real quick. And I'm going to try to run this with, let's see. Let me set up a listener. Run this through. Oops, I messed up the syntax. Doesn't seem like that one worked in particular. So I'm gonna try a different payload. Try this one. Uh, okay. Looks like that one worked. Looks like that was an, another way into the system was through using this debug console that was accessible here. I think my Metasploit just kind of blew up. So that's unfortunate. Let's see. Just gonna close. Oh, wait. Oh, it came back. That's crazy. It only took like six minutes. Wow, okay. It looks like that Pwn Kit exploit worked. It just took half a lifetime. So going back to my scan, the last thing that I haven't tried looking into yet was this Apache thing, or Apache Tomcat. So I'm just going to put Apache Tomcat exploit. Let's see. I don't know if it's running Tomcat 9. But I do see that there's a hack tricks article on this one. Let's see if there's a way to exploit this. Vulnerabilities. Let's see if there's anything that uses Metasploit because I'm lazy. So, okay. Let's see. Looks like there's a module called manage like MGR upload. So I'm going to search Tomcat MGR upload. I'm going to use number one because that one looks like it has the same name. And let's see. Well, Tomcat's running on 8080. So I'm going to set our port to 8080. And the R host is going to be dot three. I look at the options again. Okay. Looks like I filled out everything that needs to be done. So I'm going to run it now. Now it says that it failed because I couldn't access the manager. So 
it looks like it's trying to authenticate with a username and a password. So I'm going to see. Well, I don't have any usernames or passwords on me, so I'm just going to look, see if uh, Hack Tricks has anything. Hack Tricks has some stuff on default credentials. So admin, 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 Tomcat. I'm going to try admin Tomcat. Yeah, that one still failed. So I'm going to try Tomcat uh, secret. Set. HD. Uh, Tomcat. Yes, yeah, set password to secret. And I'm going to run it. And this one worked. So this time, uh, let's see if I open up a shell. This time, instead of being user though, I'm Tomcat7, but either ways I'm on the system. I think that was all the vulnerabilities that I implemented onto this system. So each, each service, oops. Each service was vulnerable to a different uh, exploit. Uh, I think there might actually be a Metasploit module for the WorkZug thing too, but uh, each of these were vulnerable to some sort of exploit. And to get root, there was the PwnKit exploit, the bash SUID, and then the pseudo privilege on the user, named user. So those were, I think, yeah, that was, that should be all five. Uh, yeah, that that's it. So... Yeah, we're, we're done here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's crazy. It so, is. So there, there are like six exploits, right? Six or six or five, one to two. I don't remember. I kind of forgot. Here, on a scale of like one to five, how many of the exploits do you think you're going to Two, seven, four, seven. So it seems like most people, some things sitting play. Uh, would you say that you guys understood the reconnaissance phase? The first part that you did with MF where he was just scanning the ports? Does that part make sense? Okay. <laughs> uh, you guys, you think you could do that yourselves? That part? Yeah. Okay, okay nice. Nice. Um, what, if, what about the next part, like Googling what was found? I mean, I'll just speak to my own personal experience. Um, like, I got stuck around the point of like figuring out what command to use to uh, get into the FFP server. And once I got into the FFP server, well, once um, Dylan was starting to work, like, so, like, oh, okay, so when you see you have this vulnerability, then you can take this and then go like take the service and go look it up for yeah. vulnerabilities. And you know, looking at that, I kind of understood. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so, it's like for the most part, most people weren't 100%, you know, able to like. Fully grasp everything. Um, but it's kind of like a, a slow process myself. You know, it took me a while to kind of get the hang of things in a couple months. Um, but this process that Dylan went over today is kind of like the, the the meat of what every kind of like offensive security or penetration test 
um, starts off with, right? You start off with figuring out, okay, well, what is there for me to attack? What is there for me to hack into, right? That's the first step. Um, and after that, you know, you figure out what is there, and then you figure out, well, what is that thing? Because you're not going to know everything, um, but you have to kind of just be comfortable with being, the process of figuring it out based on the information that you're able to find. Um, and then from there, you just kind of, you know, use the wealth of knowledge from everyone else on the internet and you just kind of claim it as your own. Um, and then, yeah, that's, that's kind of the general process, uh, three-step process that we kind of were hoping to kind uh, of uh, like go over today. So hopefully that part at least kind of made sense at the very least. Um, the following next two weeks will be kind of similar vein of um, this process, but just with different uh, specific details. So this one was more so um, using Metasploit for some known exploits in some common software. Next week, we'll be doing um, common web vulnerabilities. So these are vulnerabilities you can expect to see in everyday websites or web applications. The week after that, we'll go over uh, Windows servers, specifically ones that uh, we use services such as uh, Active Directory, um, and then we'll have our you know special capstone event where we can kind of just see how much of it we picked up. And uh, you know, if you have any questions until then, definitely feel free to reach out and let us know. If there was something that you were like, you know, I felt like I was pretty close, but I wasn't able to get it. You know, was, was I working on like the right track? You can just let us know that and can let you know like. Uh, how far you were getting or what the next step might have been like a hint or something like that uh, for the future. Other than that, I think we are all good to clear up for today. Uh, do you have anything else you wanted to mention? Uh, no, I just hope you guys learned something or had some fun trying to figure out all this stuff out. It's, it's a lot of take in. It's a lot of, there's a lot of depth that goes into each step and I kind of I, I kind of tossed all four phases at you guys at once, but hopefully, hopefully you guys got something down. Um, yeah, thank you all for coming. Uh, we'll see you later a little bit of uh, some of the security stuff, hacking the metas, uh, metas point. Uh, and I think we're good to stop the recording. Yeah, I need to figure out how to do that. Oh.